Here are my top ten favorite trading quotes. Number one: There are old traders, and there are bold traders, but there are very few old bold traders. Ed Sakota. This quote pretty much sums up what it takes to last in the market. Those who have dreams of Lamborghinis and getting rich quickly may have a few wins here or there, but in the long run, they always end up losing money. It's like gambling at a casino. You may win occasionally, but in the long run, the house will always come out ahead. No one can predict the stock market with 100% accuracy, so the key is to protect yourself from having massive losses. Anything can happen, and if you don't consider risk management, eventually you will find yourself in a major drawdown. Let's say you double your money on a trade. Emboldened, you place all your money in a hot stock and double your account again. Now you're feeling pretty special. This trading thing isn't so hard after all, is it? You decide to take all your money and put it into the next can't miss tech stock. Guess what happens? Your luck runs out and you lose it all. You were very bold, and it helped you when you were winning. But that boldness cuts both ways. Remember, you will be trading for many years, and it's a marathon, not a sprint. Always make risk management your number one priority. When you are reckless with your trading, you become a ticking time bomb. Sooner or later, that boldness. Will get you in a world of trouble. Number two, after spending many years in Wall Street and after making and losing millions of dollars, I want to tell you this: it never was my thinking that made the big money for me. It was always my sitting. Got that? My sitting tight. Jesse Livermore perfectly sums up the way to ride trends in this iconic quote. Too many people overthink the market. They use fundamental theories to state a stock just can't go any higher, or that its PE is too high, or that some highly educated analyst says it is overvalued. None of this really matters when you are in a true market leader, especially in a raging bull market. If you find yourself in a monster winner, tune out the noise, grab a bench, and let it run. Who said you couldn't make money sitting? You sure can if you catch the right growth stock early in a bull move. A common mistake is to actually cut big winners short. Many traders do this. Sometimes the market noise is so strong that you mistakenly sell a true leader on a small reaction. This is a huge mistake. Your job is to hold on to your winners as long as the trend remains intact. Just following a simple rule. To hold a stock as long as it is above a key moving average can literally lead to fortunes. There is genius in doing this. Number three, five to one. Five to one means I'm risking one dollar to make five. What five to one does is allow you to have a hit ratio of twenty percent. I can actually be a complete imbecile. I can be wrong eighty percent of the time. And I'm still not going to lose, Paul Tudor Jones. I just love the candor in this quote. Paul Tudor Jones lays it out as simply as possible. You can be an idiot and still make big money, as long as you have small losers and big winners. The key is to be smart enough to know you are not smart enough to know it all. Admit you will be wrong on trades. And make a plan to keep your losers as small as possible. Let's say I make five trades. On four of them, I lose one hundred dollars or four hundred dollars in total. On my one winning trade, I make five hundred dollars. Here's a scenario where I was wrong four out of five times and yet still made money. Jones was right. The key is not to be able to forecast market turns. It is to keep your losers as small as possible, so that your winners can pay for them and more. Number four, losers average losers. 
I've seen it happen time and time again. A trader buys a stock and soon it turns against them. Rather than taking a small loss and moving on, they decide to buy more. They get so excited. They truly believe they've gotten a bargain. Here's the deal though. You are trading stocks, not buying used clothing at a thrift store. On Wall Street, what's going down in price is usually falling for a reason. Remember, the smartest minds in the world are also watching the same stocks as you. If a stock is falling and is sharply downtrending, there's got to be a good reason for it. What looks cheap and drastically oversold can most definitely go lower. When you average down or buy more of a losing position, you put yourself in a terrible situation. You are committing more money to a stock that has already shown itself to be a loser. Why do this? If you owned a store, would you buy more of your worst selling merchandise? Of course not. A downtrending stock can always go lower. And if you continue to add to it, you will soon be left with no money to add. And remember, big losses can take years to recover from. A 50% decline takes a double just to get back to break even. Make a commitment to cut your losses before they get out of hand and vow to never, under any circumstances, add to a losing position. Number five, there is the plain fool who does the wrong thing at all times, everywhere. But there is the Wall Street fool who thinks he must trade all the time. Jesse Livermore. Here's a trap many beginners fall into. They think they have to trade every day. Nothing could be farther from the truth. In fact, there are times when the market is just outright dangerous and should be avoided at all costs. In a volatile whipsaw market, you will see sharp and unexpected moves. You will literally drive yourself crazy trying to trade in such conditions. After going through weeks or even months of difficult trading, your account and psyche will not be ready to take advantage of the next strong uptrend when it does eventually arrive. You will not only have to dig yourself out of a massive hole, you most likely will have also lost your confidence as well. There really is no reason to attempt to trade on a daily basis. It's just not worth it. Let the market sort itself out and save your trading for better days. Not only will your account be intact, you will be refreshed and prepared to trade. The key is to wait for the highest probability setups before you place a buy. Just because the market is open doesn't mean you have to make a trade. Have the discipline and patience to wait for the odds to be in your favor. Number six, there really is no intelligent reason to increase your trading size if your positions are showing losses. Mark Minervini. The legendary Mark Minervini lays out his concept of progressive exposure in a simple and easy to understand manner in this quote. After a series of losses, most amateurs try to get revenge. They make a decision to trade larger in hopes of getting their money back. Minervini is right though. If you have been losing money, take that as feedback from the market. Your losses can only mean one of two things. First, you need to have a better strategy. Or two, the market is currently hostile. When you're in a hole, make sure you stop digging and always listen to the market. If things are going poorly, the market is telling you not to be so aggressive. Only increase your trading size or exposure when you are trading well and making money. If things are not working, trade smaller or move to cash. This one quote alone can make a major difference in your overall profitability. Number seven, there is nothing new in Wall Street. There can't be because speculation is as old as the hills. Whatever happens in the stock market today has happened before and will happen again. Jesse Livermore. 
Two emotions rule the stock market, fear and greed. When greed dominates, prices rocket higher. As fear takes control, stocks decline in value. While times change and new innovations will develop, human nature never does. The cycle of fear and greed has gone on for centuries and will continue for decades to come. The emotions of fear and greed lead to strikingly similar patterns over and over again. An astute speculator can recognize these patterns and alert himself to potential opportunities and also times when danger lies ahead. Number eight, what seems too high and risky to the majority generally goes higher and what seems low and cheap generally goes lower. William O'Neill. This is the great paradox of the market. Many beginners are afraid to buy higher price stocks that have been showing signs of strength. They reason that such stocks are likely to fall and will soon be able to be bought at discounted prices. The market, however, doesn't work this way. When a big fund or institution is bullish on a stock, they start to accumulate shares. This strong demand coupled with a limited supply helps push the stock higher. As the price continues to rise, those who own the stock are happy and less inclined to sell, and those who sit on the sidelines see their envy begin to grow. This usually leads the stock to even higher prices. Major moves in the market can go on longer and move much farther than the average person can imagine. Remember, new price highs are a sign of strength, not weakness. A stock that triples will need to make many new highs along the way, each of which may at times seem far too high. Number nine, my philosophy is that all stocks are bad. There are no good stocks unless they go up in price. If they go down instead, you have to cut your losses fast. William O'Neill. Most people just can't get this. They think the product is fantastic. All my friends love it. The CEO is a genius. The technology is unstoppable. The analyst on CNBC thinks it's incredible. How can this stock possibly go down? The truth is, none of this matters. The only way you make money is if the stock goes up. The fact that your friend loves the product or that you use it every day is totally meaningless. The key to trading is not to invest in great companies. The key is to make money. And the only way to make money is if the stock price goes up. Don't fall into the hype or start to believe a stock represents easy money. If the price runs against you, get out quickly. Your thesis and your theories won't get you anywhere if the price starts to decline. The only good stocks are the ones that go up. Let that be your guiding point from this moment forward. Number 10. I have two basic rules about winning in trading as well as in life. Number one, if you don't bet, you can't win. Number two, if you lose all your chips, you can't bet. Larry Height. The great Larry Height sums up the two great failures among market participants. The first is the failure to invest. Due to inflation, you actually lose money over time on the cash that sits in your bank account. It is a huge mistake not to invest your money. It is virtually impossible to make massive returns without investing your funds. I believe the stock market is the greatest opportunity available to the average person today. Think about it. Where else do you get the chance to be part of some of the most innovative companies in the world and have the possibility of growing your money at an outstanding rate of return? There is a huge loss of opportunity for those who never take a step towards placing at least some of their money into the market. The flip side, though, as Hype points out, are those who are overly aggressive. Remember, if you go all in on a trade, you may well very lose it all. And if you lose all your money, that's it. You can't trade anymore. By all means, take advantage of the tremendous opportunity the market offers. Just make sure that if things go wrong, which they will if you trade long enough, you live to trade another day.
Those are some of my favorite trading quotes. What about you? Let me know in the comments down below.